correct me if I'm wrong, is not one of the, the major points and perhaps one of the seminal issues of debate here as to whether or not what happened in 1893 was an illegal overthrow or a revolution. Well, I don't think it really makes a whole lot mm -hmm. of difference. I mean, I think it's interesting to know what actually happened, and I think there was no doubt that it's a revolution. I don't know whether we have a disagreement on that, but there certainly was a revolution. They, they spoke of it at the time as a counter-revolution because they argued that the Queen was engaged in a revolution of her own by attempting to promulgate a new constitution without going down the path that she had sworn to uphold, which required the legislature to vote on it. And what you can say whatever you want to about uh, the Queen being the right in taking back the vote, I mean taking back the appointment of the House, but I would submit that even with property requirements it's better to at least have some people able to vote to elect an upper house rather than have the monarch appoint them. So um, I don't think there's any question that was a step backward in terms of constitutional monarchy. And in, in order to survive as a viable independent kingdom, Hawaii had to go the route of being a constitutional monarchy. If Lilio Kalani had followed the, the lead of the British monarchs and had gone along with the way the public wanted to see this thing go, she might very well, or the monarchy might still be in power. But instead of that, she got very stubborn and uh, wanted to take the whole thing back on her own. I, that's where I think she went wrong. How do you two react to that concept of illegal overthrow or revolution? It seems to me it's you're such both an kind insult. of It's hard for me to contain mm -hmm. myself and sit here and be civil. But what what the book doesn't uh, include is the whole role of the United States because Twiggs' our argument is rests on the fact that it, this was a revolution. So if it's a revolution, he has to make it something just internal between the people and the queen. Um, but in fact, um, it was not just an internal matter. There was an invasion by the United States. There was a takeover by the United States. There was an invitation by his grandfather when he went to travel to Washington, D.C. in January of 1892, asking, begging, maybe, I don't know, seeking to get the United States to annex Hawaii. There was a betrayal by his grandfather of, of the queen and of the monarchy that the his ancestors, uh, the, the missionaries had helped to establish in 18... Uh, 40, a constitutional monarchy, they abandoned it in 1893. They betrayed it in 1893 because it no longer served their interests, because their interests less rested in being a, a part of the United States, so they would not have to pay this huge trade tariff, which had just plunged the economy into bankruptcy, and, and many of the plantations had gone uh, bankrupt. Mm -hmm. And so they, they needed to become a part of the United States. It had nothing, very little to do with the Queen except that she would not cooperate with them because she didn't believe that Hawaii should continue to be so much indebted and, and dependent upon America. And that's why she didn't cooperate with them. And because she would not cooperate with them, they betrayed her. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they uh, brought in the United States to take over Hawaii. And they sought the immediate annexation. They couldn't because Cleveland was not a, a, an, an expansion expansionist president, and they had to wait until they had an uh, imperialist, pro-imperialist, pro-expansionist president McKinley to accomplish what they had sought to do, annexation. It had very little to do with the Queen's policies. It had everything to do with America's policies and the sugar economy in, in Hawaii.